Hey guys, Tomboy601, and today we have the all new campaign ship, Car No, uh, a French heavy cruiser who's got some get up and go. I just want you to watch how quick we get up to in this background B roll and just where we are able to position ourselves and just enjoy that little fact. So, with all that said, uh, if you haven't been around for one of our reviews, we're going to go over our commander, the modules. Uh, the mod slots, then go over the stats, and then show off a game in it. So if that sounds good to you, make sure you stay tuned. So, Car No, who is our commander? None other than Andre Le Monnier. Uh, I've been I really like Le Monnier for the playstyle. Um, his base trait gives you a fun ability in this ship. So his base trait um, is going to reduce cruiser detectability time after firing your main battery guns, uh, which means. Uh, because we have such a long reload, if you play this ship at range, you're going to be able to drop off of the map each time you fire a salvo, which is great. Uh, inspirations, we are running Mimbelli and Mikawa. And then as far as our skills go, we are doing Beyond Range, Igniter, Punch Through, and Fixated with Fully Packed as our other, as our legendary skill. Cool. After that, let's go ahead and go over those modules. So we have in uh, the first slot, aiming system mod one. Then in the second slot, we are running propulsion mod. Then in the third slot, we are running that concealment mod. And finally, we are running that main battery mod three. Though I could also see someone running uh, gunfire control to get a little bit more range and not take the uh, gun traversal penalty because the guns do traverse relatively slow for for uh, for a boat. Next, let's go ahead and go into those consumables. First one is the damage control party. Damage control party, five second duration, 58.8 second uh, reload time. Then we have our first option. We can either go with sonar or defensive AA. We are sticking with sonar. Uh, 3.3 detectability on torpedoes, 4.7 on ships. Not the best sonar, but a pretty decent one nonetheless. We're going to get three charges. It's going to recharge in 176 seconds. After that, we have our repair party, 332 health um, over 28 seconds. It's going to reload 78.4 seconds, and you're going to get three charges. They're not the biggest heals, but they are still fairly effective. After that, we have the engine boost or the option to run either a spotter plane or a fighter plane. We're running edge boost. It's what makes the French ships unique. It's what lets us get out to um, places on the map that we shouldn't be able to. Let's us get up to 40 knots in this boat, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, so yeah, we're going to stick with the engine reloading. Guys, that is Carnot. That's, that's, those are, uh, those are what you need to know as far as, uh, as far as mods slot as far as modules and consumables go let's go ahead and dive on into those stats so carno you're gonna be doing six uh, so carno you're gonna have sixty six thousand four hundred and fifty hit points with an armor thickness between 13 and 305 millimeters let's go ahead and take a look at that armor view and as and as you can see a bit of an interesting armor view up front you're gonna have a 25 millimeter bow which uh can absolutely get punched through buy things and you do need to be wary because uh 25 mil uh will get punched through by a lot of things at the tier alternatively you do have this big old freeboard on the side of the ship which is a 30 millimeter to 180 millimeters of armor however uh that 180 millimeters of armor is still protecting that citadel citadel nice and below the water so that's the armor view uh i think it's a fairly well armored ship you just need to know that you need to angle in this boat and if you don't angle uh your nose will get punched in this isn't a bow tanking ship this is this is one where you want to be on the move torpedo reduction on the vessel you're looking at 25 percent main battery you have two three barreled and one four barreled 305 millimeter gun with a firing range of 17.4 kilometers reload time on it 21.1 seconds uh, giving you a shell sprint of 28. 180 time on the guns, 35.3 seconds. HE damage, 4,250. Giving you a DPM of 119,000. 
uh, with a chance of fire of 28%. AP damage, you're looking at 9,396, giving you a DPM of 263,088. Secondaries, it does have some secondaries. Eight two-barreled 100 millimeter guns and four two-barreled 139s with a firing range of 6.3 kilometers. Reload time on them. Uh, for the 100 millimeter guns, you're looking at a three second reload in a damage of 1400 with an 8% chance to set fire. For the 139s, you're looking at six point, uh, you're looking at a 10 second reload, 2000 damage, and 11% chance to set fire. Total DPM of those secondaries is going to be 544,000, uh, which is, I think, the highest for the tier for a cruiser, but you know, it's secondaries. You're not actually going to be putting out that much damage with them. AA, surprisingly good, I'm going to say. It's it's not an AA cruiser, but it's 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 solid. Uh, five kilometer range, minimum damage of 118, maximum of 362. Maneuverability of the vessel, 35 and a half knots. Turning race, 870 meters, and a rudder shift time of 14.4 seconds. Finally, concealment of the vessel, detectability by sea, 11.3 kilometers. By air, 7.1 kilometers, and when firing in smoke, 10.6. And those are all the stats of Carnot. And with all that said, let's now go ahead and dive on in to a match with the ship. So welcome to Land of Fire. Uh, you may notice something about both this and the last clip we showed, and that's that we are spawning on the flank. And that is where Carnot is happy. That is where you get the best results from Carnot, and I will say this just to get it out of the way. Carnot isn't going to be the most fa fantastic boat of all time. I think it's going to have a relatively higher skill floor. I think it's going to be one of those ones where we may see it get buffs because the general player base won't play it the best way, but it is a ship that's going to let you play in some fun ways and some different ways, and if you're into that, then I think the Carnot's in the Carnot's for you. If you're not into that, if you're not into, uh, you know, French weird uh, pen and uh, like some of, some of its other quirks, it may not be for you. But as you saw there right off the rip, uh, we get six pens on that Republic uh, for 14,000 damage, and that's always good. Um, Carno is also going to be a boat where it is going to feel real weird at the end of this update when people start to get them, uh, because I honestly think it's going to be a boat where people, where you're going to only want like one on your team, right? Where it's it's good at getting to a flanky position, getting uh, getting to a place where no other ship can get to and holding that position with as big, as big of guns as can get there. But if everyone is running around, if there's two or three or four of them in a match, those positions where Carnot is going to excel are going to be few and far between because other people will have taken them up. So... That is my initial warning for when this campaign ends and there's a million Carnos out there. I would say hold your horses uh, and wait for Carno, wait for the next campaign and then start bringing out your Carno and you may, you may find yourself a little bit more success. So what are we doing? Well, we kind of pushed out wide here and this is where I like to play Carno is nice far away, right where the enemy is outside of our minimum detection range. Why? Well, with our build, uh, we are able to fire our guns, cycle them, and of course, you know, we had the 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 miss the mischoice of shells here, and you can see how long it's going to take us, because we saw that Seattle come out broadside, and we're like, ooh, juicy Citadel Seattle, also Republic turning in broadside, uh, our gearing looking like he's going in for a, a death run, which isn't great, Seattle pops up there just in time, and we'll go ahead and let our shells fly. Um, as they do, the enemy is definitely concentrating on that gearing as he loses a ton of health and we take a Citadel from Seattle. Um, and as they continue to concentrate on him, we're going to uh, see if we can flip over to uh, Republic, but we're going to lose sight of, of both of them there. Uh, Seattle not looking like he's going to take up. Oh, nope, he does end up taking a uh, torpedo. And that's that. Now we just have that Republic out on this flank and we can probably try to push in. Or at least we're going to try, just because, uh, you know, we we have overwhelming odds on this side. We should be able to deal with him. Um, also, we need to start kind of getting things to happen if we want to start winning this match. We are up on ships, down on capture points. 
Um, and if we can get into that point, we should be doing fairly well. So full, full speed ahead towards the thing. Back to car now. Um, the guns are a bit wonky. Um, sometimes they have magical French pen and they are incredible. Sometimes they overpen the crap out of everything. Sometimes uh, you shoot at a paper mache Sejong and it, it instantly uh, dev strikes them. This the the guns on Carno are temperamental, and you need to be prepared for that. She is not very consistent, unfortunately. If she became more consistent, I think uh, a lot more people would probably end up liking her. But as of now, the guns aren't particularly consistent. Um, I will say with the fire chance on them, uh, I've, I have had multiple times today where I got double fires off of a single salvo. And that is something where we have slightly specced into with our build with uh, adding that fire chance. I um, mean, that's kind of what we wanted to do with that. Uh, we wanted to try to see if we could, you know, build into the fire chance just a tad. Uh, because if you do have a bow in ship, you want to be able to, uh, to do that as we take our shot and we are just going to get slapped in return yep there we go and he's gonna kind of turn wide and try to get that his other turret and at this point i'm like okay maybe our team can pop out now kind of get the broadside republic as we take another big old hit with carnot um the armor on carnot not the best and as you can see our pen not the best down down while republic does have some impressive armor given the size of the guns i would have thought we would have been able to pen kind of the main armor belt of of a battleship, especially at this range. But you saw how we just kind of shatter there. So we have to kind of stick to the upper belt of Republic. And we can see we get some better results there, but still a good number of shatters. And that's the thing. Like, you're like, okay, we have 300 millimeter guns. We should, I would have expected us to be able to start pushing through things. But, you know, such are, such are the mechanics of this game. We're going to have to stick to um, upper belts and uh, superstructures. Anyways, we've kind of cleared our side. We have a, we are now going to try and push into B as uh, the remainder of our team is still duking it out with the enemy over there. We're going to go ahead and use that second speed boost. And the speed boost is one, is the other thing that, you know, I already said, I, I showed how we used it at the beginning, but the speed boost is just magical. <laughs> um these guns should not be able to go 40 knots. Um, with our build, we are able to get just up to about 40 knots with this. If you build it for speed, you could be going even faster, which is just silly. Like, that's that's the true magic of Carnot right there is, is just the speed. Um, and it's kind of one of the unique things. What I wasn't really expecting this because, uh, you know, given what Carno is, right? Big guns, no torpedoes. It's it's supposed to be like an Azuma. It's supposed to be like an Alaska. It's supposed to be like a Yoshino. Uh, you know, it's it's a super cruiser. It's a heavy, it's a it's it's supposed to kind of be a cross between a battleship and a uh, cruiser. And uh, usually that doesn't result in speed. But here in this formula, um, we go zoom zoom. And it is so satisfying. Um, anyways, we've kind of crossed over. We know their two destroyers uh, are out and lurking. And that's kind of the bad thing um, that uh, that we are uh, down in this match. Because they have both of their destroyers. And it's going to be hard for us to do much about it. We don't have um, us, Carno. We have a sonar. Um, but it's not exactly a long range sonar on top of that. Uh, the HE damage, the HE alpha strike on Carnot, not particularly impressive. I will say, um, I, I find, uh, that, you know, you, you would expect it to do a little bit more to destroyers. Uh, but you, you are not an anti-destroyer ship. You can fire at them and do, you know, some chunks of damage, but do not expect to, you know, uh, dev strike a destroyer with Carno. There is simply just not enough alpha uh, potential within those guns in order to do that, which is unfortunate. Um, but you know, it, it, it's it's supposed to be played in the back lines. Makes sense that it's not exactly the most effective. 
against um, against uh, destroyers. Anyways, we've now captured B, and we need to try and find ourselves some angles if we want to win. We are being constantly spotted, which isn't great. Minotaur pops up right here. We can see those shells sailing beautifully, and pop goes the Minotaur. Beautiful. Exactly, exactly what you want from a ship like this, right? Uh, a beautiful dev strike, and we're like, ooh, hello, Mr. Buffalo. Is this dev strike numero two on the table? As more torpedoes come in, we, we, we have our sonar going just because we know there's, we know there are enemy torps uh, out and about. Um, and we are now seeing, we are getting cross torped, which is not a great position to be, but it explains why we've been spotted so much of this time. Thankfully, we are able to dodge that set of torpedoes as more torpedoes start coming our way. We're getting those guns swung around because we know there is a buffalo out and about that we should be able to uh, to absolutely slap. Um, and as we get spotted, we see, or at least I thought we saw buffalo. Um, but we're trying we're trying to kind of spread ourselves. We're trying to get north and find a new angle. Buffalo pops up there. We're like, oh, he's beautiful. He's bright, broadside. This is gonna be just like that Minotaur. He uh, he drops off, but good hits, but just over pens and ricochets. Okay. Interesting. And this is what I'm talking about, the temperamentalness of Carnot. Here we go. Again, I'm going to call it the same exact shot, essentially. And this time, um, well, there we go. That's much more what we're expecting. One pen and four over pens. And that's, that's, the, that's the kind of downside of Carnot right there. The inconsistency. You would, you would, you want that Minotaur shot every single time, but you're not gonna get that Minotaur shot every single time. You're gonna get uh, different things at this point. Enemies start capturing A, which is not great, and well, uh, they're Shima Torps uh, from A, as we eat two of them and take pretty much all of our health away from us, which is <laughs> not great. Um, we do end up finishing off the Buffalo which is nice, we're up to 100,000 damage. And we're like, okay, what can we do next? Palmer and coming around the corner here, can we uh, can we finish knocking him out? Um, he's he's nice and low, he looks like uh, he should be a good target. I um, mean, we're at range where we should be able to do some things. As he starts to turn in, he takes out our uh, last battleship and it's gonna be one, it's gonna be uh, the, old, the old campaign ship Versus the new campaign ship, both with about the same amount of health. Um, we still have our AP loaded. He goes ahead and drops spot. We've dropped spot. We kind of want to reposition, see if we can find a better location, see if we can also support our uh, Alaska, who is over there um, in his upcoming battle with the Worcester, um, and just try, try to consolidate our forces a little bit more, um, make it so that we can hopefully bring home the win as Worcester uh, starts to come around the corner, I'm like, okay, this could be a good time in order to use um, our guns. We'll hold the shot, see if we can wait until those turrets continue making their turn. That is one of the, the, the things, like we were saying, slow turning on those turrets. We're gonna take the shot just as we as he comes behind that, and we're, we're gonna kind of give ourselves up fully broadside. But we do get a Citadel, and we end up picking up the Confederate right there. And we're gonna try to turn out and avoid these Palmer and shells, but uh, well, they're gonna leave us with 150 health. <laughs> oh, so Worcester looking like the deed is gonna be done. Um, looks like the Alaska will be able to finish him. So we really only have one more shot left on this Palmer. We'll see what we can do up into that superstructure. But as far as uh, game goes, it's not looking good. We get a decent salvo, a decent chunk up there, but at this point. If anything sneezes on us, uh, it is game, and we can see those last shells coming in. And guys, this will be the end of the match. Um, Carno, like I said, I think it's a fun ship. I'm really enjoying it. I, um, I think it's a different way to play, and it's going to be a ship that some people really enjoy, and other people, it's not theirs, and that's okay. Um, but yeah, guys, if you like the video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.